Okay, thanks for coming. Appreciate it. Um, as, as Doug said, I was the one that started the um, RTSJ work back in uh, 98, actually. And uh, so it's, it's, been, it's been an interesting uh, decade almost, getting close. And uh, if you actually look back to when I started thinking about support for real-time scheduling and general purpose OSs, that would be my dissertation, which the topic came up in 92. So we're about 15 years into this now for me. I'm going to talk about some, some things, uh, just a little bit more on the general RTSJ to start, and then uh, directly into the SUN implementation of JSR1 we call Sun Java Real-Time System uh, 2.0 now. And then uh, these other topics, some about priorities, compilation, uh, processor affinity, uh, and some implementation details about a really crucial piece of, of the RTSJ called Wait for Next Period. Uh, Real-time GC we're going to spend a, a, a fair amount of time on because it turns out that uh, a lot of people really want to use RTGC. And uh, when we did the specification, we actually imagined way back in those days that that's where the bulk of real-time Java code would be written using real-time garbage collection. And the, the, the other area using uh, no-heap real-time threads, we expected a little bit of code to be written. And I'll talk about that in the system model. Uh, how that looks. And then we're going to go into spend some time with uh, three case studies the inverted pendulum, the Slakar programming contest, which I will encourage you all to try out uh, next month in Moscone in San Francisco, and uh, the, the really, really cool demo that I, I finally got to do something real. Uh, I told my management last year after the Slakars, they said, no more toys for Greg. You know, it's been almost 10 years of me doing little toy robots and things. You know, either I do something real this year or I'm going to go do something else. So, so they, they let me bought a, buy a real industrial robot, and this thing is actually pretty scary. So, by the way, this, this is the inverted pendulum for those of you who haven't seen it. Uh, it's kind of very still here, but it's actually live, and it's balancing on that. And I think it'll come back up, won't it? Uh, yeah, okay. So we can watch that for a while. So we, uh, Java Real-Time System 1.0 uh, came out in um, oh, about two years ago now. And it does no-heap real-time threads really well, but it doesn't have uh, real-time GC. And the numbers that I'm going to give you uh, sprinkled out throughout this presentation are uh, numbers on specific machines that we got with our performance tests for you know, the system configured in a particular way. Your mileage will vary. Okay? Different processors, different system architectures, there's cache issues uh, that you know, come into play. And so the numbers can vary uh, across, the, across the scope of uh, different hardware. So as you can see, on uh, Spark and Solaris 10, we got latency and jitter numbers that are pretty damn good. They're pretty close to what you would get in a real-time OS, uh, 20 microseconds of max latency. That's good enough, certainly, to do this kind of thing. It's more than appropriate for doing robotics control. Uh, it's, it's pretty amazing to do that in Java. And it actually amazed the Solaris folks uh, that we could do that on their operating system. 2.0 is in beta, and the big things we added there were uh, x86, x64 support and um, uh, real-time GC. And the NetBeans module kind of came in between releases. But those are, those are the big things. So real-time GC and uh, x64 allow us to sort of really broaden the kind of the set of applications that uh, we, can, we can support. Uh, Doug mentioned most of this, JSR1. Uh, the important thing is that you know, real-time Java is not a silver bullet. There, there are no such things in the software world, unfortunately. You know, 
Well, maybe not, unfortunately. Otherwise, you wouldn't have jobs, right? Uh, writing code is hard. Getting it correct is even harder. Doing real-time code is hard, no matter what kind of system you're on. Uh, but it is, a, it is a much, much better place to do real-time code than, um, than previously. So the uh, Sun's CTO and executive vice president of research and development, Greg Papadopoulos, did his graduate work at MIT. And when he got out of school, his first job was writing the reentry code for the space shuttle, parts of it, real-time control loop for controlling the reentry of the space shuttle. And uh, he's been a big supporter for RTSJ and Sun Java real-time system since day one, uh, since he first heard me talk about it. And he told me a few months ago, when he first heard about it, he really didn't believe it could be done. Right? Well, we did it. And recently, I mean, he's, he and Jonathan Schwartz love this demo. They take it everywhere. And, and Greg um, talks about how you can write hard real-time code to do control systems in a modern high-level IDE, NetBeans, on stock off-the-shelf Sun products. I mean, you buy stock Java RTS, you get stock Solaris, you get stock Sun hard hardware, you put them together, you configure them, and you do hard real-time code in a modern programming environment. And he said that just completely astounds him because when he wrote code, it was really, really painful. So that's, that's a good thing coming from your EVP. So here's a system model. One of the most important things you'll walk away from this presentation is understanding that uh, the system model and that it actually really works, okay? In the past, the way that people did real-time was they isolated the real-time code to separate processors that uh, did only one thing, right? It's pretty, pretty easy to do real-time code if that's the only thing you're doing on the machine. Think about watching a DVD on a Windows box, right? Do you ever sit down and say, well, how the hell is this actually working, right? That's, playing, playing video is actually a hard real-time requirement, and yet we do it every day on, on Windows boxes. Why? Well, that's because it's the only thing that it's doing, right? Try to do something else on the Windows box, and it's not going to work very well. And you do get occasional blips in the video playback, but you know, the, 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 um, the cost of missing a deadline in a video player isn't very high. You just get a slightly annoyed viewer. But we've all learned, well, they've, they've, Bill has taught us to live with that slight annoyance, right? And so now we don't even get annoyed anymore, right? So, you know, the non-real-time world in computers are trying to retrain the public that, oh, you don't need that real-time stuff, right? These blips are okay. Of course, we in the control industry and other places actually know you can't do that uh, to, to real serious applications. So it, Java RTS comes along, and you can do all three kinds of programming, non-real-time, soft real-time, and hard real-time, all in the same VM at the same time. All of these demos that you see and the, 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 the uh, case studies I'll talk about use code in all three of these areas. And, and they all cohabitate the VM perfectly peacefully. They do their jobs correctly. And it's, it's just not a problem anymore. 